Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today we're going to talk about speed painting Tyranids. Uh, I've got this Tyranid guy, he's from Space Hulk or whatever it was, one of those board games. And uh, I like Tyranids, I think they're really cool. And I think that they give us a lot of neat chances to explore colors. They're, they've got a lot of really fun organic shapes. And all in all, they're actually a very fast paint, which is good because goodness gracious knows that there are a lot of Tyranids. Uh, so many. Why are there so many Tyranids in an army? So we're going to tackle the methods today for get it done quick. And we're starting, you notice, with some dry brushing. So I zenithilled them. Uh, if you want to see more about zenithiling, there'll be a link up in the top right to take you there. But now I'm just doing a very light dry brush over the whole thing uh, with uh, pale sand. And the paint list was at the beginning of the video in case you, hopefully you didn't miss it. Um, but this is just to add some more lightness to it, brighten them up a little bit. The goal here is to use simple techniques repeatedly and quickly to make sure that you can paint hundreds of these little guys quickly and efficiently. So step one, we just give a nice light dry brush of a good white color. I'm using pale sand. As with anything in this video, you do not have to use the exact paint I'm using. Any light warm white will work just fine. All right, so he's all dry brushed, easy enough. All that nice organic texture is picked out. Now we're gonna start adding the colors that we need. Uh, so we're gonna go to our old friend washes. Now with things like Tyranids, they're great for this because they have all sorts of weird little folds and details and structures and I don't know, other weird words like that. But they, in other words, they take a wash well. <laughs> and I'm focusing the Reichland flesh shade on what is supposed to be the flesh bits. You notice there I got some up on the carapace as well, doesn't matter. I want to talk to you about basically the trick to applying a wash well and getting a nice even coverage so you avoid most coffee staining. One, notice I'm using a nice big brush, not a little brush I'm trying to sweep around. Nice big brush. Two, always keep your brush moving. Notice how my brush is constantly moving, pushing into new areas, and then going back and sweeping over the area I just covered, soaking up all that extra paint and dispersing it around the model. So we're not getting any pools. I move to a new area, spread the paint there, sweep back over the old area, pick up, sweep into another new area, back and forth, back and forth, constantly sweeping to keep that color moving, sinking in the recesses and avoiding pooling, spreading it out evenly. Lots of fast, repeated, constant brush strokes. All right, so next step. That wash isn't even totally dry. Who cares? We don't need it to be. Again, this is about speed painting. We're gonna take some purple ink. It can be any purple ink. You could use Vallejo Game Ink Purple. You could use anything. I've thinned this down quite a bit. Put some flow improver in it. You can just use water. It'll be the same if you don't have flow improver. And now I'm just going to turn that carapace a light shade of purple. I'm not worrying about how dark I want it to be. And I saw lots of different paint jobs in researching this uh, for... This is obviously High Fleet Leviathan that we're doing here. And so I saw a lot of different takes on sort of the purple and, and how purpley it was versus how much blue is in that purple and how dark it is. So... If you don't like what uh, how dark mine is, it's pretty easy. We'll talk about how to darken it up at the end. But uh, basically, you just run the purple over all the carapace, easy peasy. With all that flow improver, it's going to get in deeper. If you don't have any ink at all and you want to use like a GW uh, purple wash, you can do that. You'll just need to apply multiple coats. Uh, same with contrast paints. So with the purple applied, now it's time to turn to his little thingies. Uh, and in Leviathan, all their little thingies are red. Uh, which is a really interesting color combination, these guys, with sort of the the gray-white and then the purple shell and the, the bright red claws. It's very striking. Uh, so here we're using uh, some GW Contrast Paint, Blood Angels Red. Very fun, uh, really intense red that I really like. It's great, great contrast paint. Uh, this is very simple. I'm just going around and applying a single coat of contrast paint to all the fingies, all the nails, making sure they all get turned a nice red. Uh, this may seem strange to do this step now, given the steps I'm going to do next when we return to dry brushing, but trust me, there's a purpose. There is a method to the madness. Uh, but yeah, turn all the fingies red. Easy. All right, so we applied a lot of very liquid paints, uh, but we're almost done with the first detail. And here's where we start to get a little bit sneaky. So this is some Volpus pink. Uh, again, another contrast paint. And this is going to go in his, I don't know, these little muscle structures, or I'm not sure exactly what they are. These little things that look like vents uh, in his skin. 
I don't know what these are. I don't know tyranid anatomy. Didn't, didn't study bug anatomy in school. But I'm putting it down into all those little muscle structures. And then I'm also doing things like putting it into, you saw me put some into the mouth, like around the teeth, right? So that's kind of the color there. So it looks like gums. But I fill all these little plates up. Then what I'm going to do is take this same vulpus pink, leave it on my brush, but I thin it down a little, touch it into some water, and then touch it to a wet piece of paper towel. And what I'm going to do then is just start softly glazing it into the lower areas of some of the miniature, around the arms, the skin, just adding a nice subtle pink shade to various areas on the miniature. And what I'm doing here with this is this is one of those simple tricks to elevating speed painting. This takes me maybe an extra 10 seconds. But by adding these soft, subtle glazes, just, you know, maybe the base of the neck, the under part of the arm, in between these uh, sort of muscle plates or skin plates, whatever they are, up at, at joint areas, just whatever struck my fancy is kind of where I threw some of this soft glazing. By doing that, it adds a whole nother tone to the skin. And it's, you see how we build it up with just these quick, easy steps. And we add enough of this kind of stuff it starts to look like we spent a lot of time blending and doing complicated work when in fact we were just sloshing paint around and not really worrying about it too much. You see how I just kind of push it around into all these places. All right, now that pink is dry, you can see how it added some really wonderful low tones. The problem is, is that Leviathan is really much more of a white gray. So hence Vallejo model color, white gray. Now we're gonna to return to our old friend dry brushing. Now I hear you, I hear you out there internet person. Are you a madman? You just applied all those colors and now you're gonna dry brush again? Yes, I am. The amount I have on the brush is extremely minimal. And this is a very small, very soft makeup brush. That's the key to good dry brushing. So very little paint, very soft, lots of applications. Look how many times my brush is hitting the model to leave paint behind. Now importantly, I'm not just focusing on the skin. That's my main goal. But I'm also dragging it across things like the edges of the claws, the edge of the carapace, because that's giving me sort of some free contrast and edge highlights that are just going to help to create more tonal variation later on in the miniature. Focusing mainly on the skin, but also hitting those other areas to just build up the edges of the whole model simultaneously with this soft, repeated dry brush. All right, so our dry brush is all complete. Again, all these steps have been really fast. Now what we wanna do is we wanna put that, that very famous Tyranid texture onto the, the carapace. So for here, I got a nice sharp, thin brush, grab myself some white ink. Again, you can just use very thinned down white paint or something like that. And I'm just gonna quickly trace some lines right near the edge of the carapace. This is some of the easiest sort of texturing you can do because it's just hashing in little lines. You draw toward the edge of the carapace. The ink really makes this a no-brainer. It's so fast and easy with the ink. Uh, couldn't recommend enough that you invest in getting some white ink. It'll make your hobby life and doing things like this so much simpler. So I just sketch in these nice, sharp, thin lines. Quick, simple, no problem, job's a good one. And it creates that wonderful texturing. I'm gonna do that on the white pieces as well to just create more highlight, more white gray on the areas like the top of the head and all those little bumps and ridges of that similar shape that he has elsewhere too. So just quickly sketching all these in and uh, yeah, it's just drawn thin lines. It's really all it is, fast, simple. All right, so all our little lines are in place and between the dry brushing and the hash lines, we've added a lot of texture to this guy but unfortunately, we've also desaturated our colors on things like our purples and our reds. Now I'm going to take some of my original Purple Lake and mix it in with a little Payne's Gray, which is a wonderful blue-black ink. If you don't have something like that, just use regular old black paint. Grab yourself some Abaddon Black or something like that. But I'm thinning it down. And now I'm just going to keep running it toward the center of the carapace. This is effectively uh, like a much a controlled wash. Notice that I'm always pulling the brush toward the center so that that extra paint that's pooling is getting caught down in the, the crevices of that carapace, darkening it and darkening it. I start from the edge of the carapace and pull in. 
Now I'm going to repeat this uh, two times. So I put one application on, let it dry, come back again. Uh, I think I do that. I think I probably actually do three times total just to really create a, a full spectrum of contrast. Because every time I'm pulling the paint towards the center, you notice that those those little hash lines I made, they still show and they pick up a wonderful tint from that purple. So they now blend right into the carapace. At the same time, I take some of this purple ink and I do something, I do just a couple other fun things to create some shadows. Like very quickly, I'm running down at the base of the Blood Angel's red, uh, like all the bottom of the fingernails, create a nice little dark light distinction at the base of his, his big fingernails, his big claws. Uh, hitting some in the neck, just little parts, deep shadows. Again, never waste a chance when you've got the color and you're already using it. You can throw it around in other places when you're speed painting just to create some other visual interest. It's fast, it's simple, and what it does is, again, make it look like you tried way harder than you did. All right, so with that dry, uh, now it's time to move on to our next step. So for this, we're just going to go ahead and repeat that glaze, but we're going even darker and we're focusing more toward the middle. So I mixed in a little bit more Payne's Gray, and now I'm, you see how I'm really just focusing on the inner part of the carapace. So now I'm kind of focusing away from the lines just to really deepen down the center of that carapace and up my contrast all the way. Same technique as last time, just repeated. All right, we're in the home stretch, and basically all we've done is dry brushed, washed, and drew some thin lines. Now it's time to draw some more thin lines, and there is a reason why I do this twice. By applying the lines first, then washing over them, or glazing over them, and then doing the lines again, you get different levels of the texture, and again, it makes it look like you've tried a lot harder, like you did these very complicated blends on your texturing. We didn't. We just drew some lines, glazed over them, drew second lines. This I took a tiny amount of the purple ink and put it into the white ink so I just so I didn't go all the way back to the white spectrum. But other than that, same as last time, just draw some nice thin lines over all of those same areas on the carapace to really reinforce that chitinous sense in the carapace itself. All right, so carapace is all done. Now we're just going to go ahead and basically clean up details. These last steps are just detail cleanup. This is kind of the going in at the end. You could obviously stop here if you wanted to. If you had a ton of them, you'd be fine. But I'm going to take some of that Blood Angels red. You notice how I thinned it down here. This is just some water. And I'm just going to run over top of all the nails again. The white will still show through. It will still create a very bright spot of red. You'll really see it on those upward facing claws um, because those really caught the, the dry brush hard. So you can just see how... Look at how we haven't really done much of anything other than a dry brush, and yet it looks like that claw has a wonderful edge to it, like we spent time edge highlighting. Who's got time for that? Not us. We're speed painting bugs, and we got a hundred more of these guys to do before sunset. So, just touching in those little details, and we're good to go. Now it's time to just wrap up the very last items. Uh, going back in with some Magos Pink filling in the little, uh, the muscles again. Again, it just creates more distinction, so it's no problem that some of them got a little covered up. Filling in the play, the the muscle structure in between the, I don't know, the bony color carapace. This guy has multiple different carapaces. Their tyranid anatomy is very confusing. Uh, but just filling those in, again, just getting that color in there. I'm gonna hit his eyeballs, you know, picking a couple interesting spots. Again, thinning it down. If I see a chance to do a cool glaze, like you see me here on the bottom of those volumes, I'll do so. But basically that's it. You can stop, you know, at any point in this. Like you could have stopped after the initial colors if you wanted to. There's always lots of places you can get off the bus. But this is a fast, fun little guy. Um, I honestly wouldn't mind painting a whole bunch of dudes like this. You can see how you can easily work this out. Uh, and they're going to look great together on the table, swarming to consume all for the biomass. So there you go. If you liked this, uh, give it a like. Subscribe for additional hobby cheating in the future. If you've got questions about anything I did here, drop it down below. As always, more than happy to help. But I thank you so much for watching this one, and we'll see you next time.